Hi there, I'm Bianca Rahimi and for this edition of Iran, we're here at the International Fashion Festival in Tehran. We're going to start with Pedram. He's going to be taking us to see some of the houses and gardens that have made Yazd famous. Some are luxurious, others are modest, but each one is a work of art. In my journey, what I was enjoying every day was the homes and gardens in the city of Yazd. It was one of the most interesting aspects of the city and what gave the city its looks. This is one of the simplest homes in the city of Yaz. A central courtyard and a pond in the middle, and four rooms on all sides. But this, as I said, is one of the simplest. So stay with me as I take a look at the posh homes in the city of Yaz. These homes have become a tourist attraction in the city of Yazd, and all of them have become museums with a twist. My first stop was the Lari House, a house that had been restored and opened to public as a museum, a place for normal citizens and art lovers to enjoy. One of the pretty rooms in the Lari House was the mirror hall, which had mirrors all around and intricate paintings on the ceiling. Now I'm going to go and see the most famous house in Yaz. The Malikut Tujar house was the first that was restored and opened to the public as a restaurant and hotel. One of the good things with these old hotels is you can enjoy your food while you enjoy the atmosphere. The plaster work in this hotel is eye-catching and every corner that you see has something to say. Every corner is an art masterpiece itself. An invaluable experience you can have is to stay at one of these suites for your honeymoon. This is one of the best rooms in the hotel. Walking in the alleys gave me a feeling that I was walking in the past. The arcs so beautiful yet simple. I was wondering, what was the material used in all these clay walls that gave it the rich historic look and at the same time made life possible in these homes? I asked my friend Hassan about the mixture and the reason behind it. Many walls, the outer parts of the building, are covered with uh, kahgel, which is a mixture of mud and straw. Uh, it used to uh, act as a kind of uh, in, in, insulation, as we see. This mixture creates the facade of the beautiful buildings in the desert. This simple mixture holds the sun seated itself from the day, in winters, and gives it away during nights, making the rooms hot. And in summers, it gives away the coolness synced in it at nights, during the day. On the second day of my trip, I went to a place for a cup of tea. This place surprised me as it was so stunning. This is a bathhouse from over 200 years ago. While it's a bathhouse, its architecture and tile work showcases the beauty of Iranian architecture. The Khan bathhouse had become a restaurant and cafe serving many herbal drinks, some a specialty of Iran. 
The variety in the tea section made me drink three cups of tea just in case I didn't get a chance to come back here again. The bathhouse looked like anything but a place to bathe. I don't know how they could make this place dirty, it just looked so fine. Another bathhouse worth a visit is the Abul Maoli one. Its traditional look and beds make it a place worth a visit. The artistry of Iranian architects is visible in these places, which were bathhouses and now have become like museums. At night, I've come to the Zargar Yazdi house, which was a gold jeweler, to see the beauty and magnificence of his home in the dark. I experienced living in history in one of these homes. So can you. Some people are always on the lookout for the latest models where cars are concerned, but others believe nothing beats the classics. Some of the models you're about to see are the pride and joy of their owners, as they should be, because they might be one of only a few left in the country or the world. Many people believe that old cars have a special style that modern cars lack. Some even say that despite all the new equipment that you see on modern vehicles, they all look the same. Some people believe that they feel safer and much more secure in a vehicle which has more muscle, steel and chrome instead of composite material and plastic. True or false, one thing is for certain. The more new cars are built, the more people like older cars. This is me at the age of one. My dad bought a 1975 blue Opel Commodore to celebrate the birth of his first child. And that's my dad in 1978, with his brand new Chevy, which he still holds as a keepsake. This is my little brother with the same car. He cleans it almost every day. Many believe that these old beauties come from an age when the taste of life was much sweeter than what it is today. In fact, they bring back the memories of the good old days. Today, unfortunately, most of these vehicles are history. In Iran, there are only a few places where they revive these cars so that their hearts would start beating once again. An old garage in Karaj city near the capital Tehran is a hangout for those who resist against the rapid technological evolution in the automotive industry. <laughs> استیلاک موتور شمتره الان نسل جدید هم پی بردن به این مسئله که الان ماشین های قدیمی رو دوست دارم درست میکنم، باسازی میکنم، رنگ میکنم موتور تعمیر میکنم ماشین به شکل اولش و صورت اولیه در میاد There are usually two methods of restoration. One is to refurbish a car in order to make it look like brand new again. And the other way is to tune the car with a complete engine and body makeover. ماشین درگ اولین چیزی که هستش معمولا از اتاقای سبکتر استفاده میشه. با شاسی های یتیکه و قوی با موتور بیگ بلوک. با گیرباکس های یدنده یا دودنده که اصلا ماشین به در شهر یعنی دیگه نمیخوره In addition to its beating heart under the hood, the way the car must look after it leaves the workshop is very important. Don't forget that for many customers it was love at first sight when they bought their car. خب معمولا افرادی که از این ماشین ها میخوان ماشین کلاسیک میخوان جمع کنن، بازسازی کنن، 
با اون هزینه های زیادی که هست معمولا رنگ با کیفیت خیلی بالاتر پیشنهاد میدن اون رنگ پاچیدنش یا به قول معروف انجام دادن کارش خیلی مشکله که بشه کیفیت کار رو حفظ کرد And this is when things get more serious as owners of vintage, classical and modern sports cars gather in the capital of Tehran for some real hot riding. Many of these cars are too wild and too noisy to be driven in streets. That's why they're brought in with a carrier. This is one of the most popular hangouts for speed maniacs, as well as an exhibition of the latest models of Super GTs and tuned dragsters. The competitors have to hit the runway two by two. The one who crosses the finish line just 400 meters away will be the winner. I like the car. I like driving. I like the speed. My car is a Buick Park Avenue, model 1977. I have changed the engine and the transmission and differential, and it is now drag race car. In this ragged atmosphere, one can still find that old feeling about cars, which I earlier told you about. I bought this car about 20 years ago, and my son at that time, he was five years old, and he grew up with this car. Today, cars are a part of our lives, just like a good horse back in the old days. They represent our way of thinking, our social class, our concern for the environment, our passion for speed, and our nostalgia. Amir Mehdi Kazemi, for Iran. you can't help being reminded of the Persian carpet. It's what Persia is most famous for. Carpets are woven all over Iran, but each city has its characteristic patterns. And Tabriz is one such city. Esfahan, Kerman, Kashan, and Qom all have one thing in common, carpets. But I've heard that some of the best and finest carpets in Iran are made here in the city of Tabriz. Let's go check them out. Muzaffariye Hall in the Bazaar of Tabriz is the center for the best Tabriz carpets, always bustling with buyers bargaining for a lower price. The bazaar itself is the largest covered bazaar in the world and is inscribed as a UNESCO World Heritage Site, definitely the rightful place to hunt for these precious handmade masterpieces. به خاطر طراحی که در تبریز هست و به خاطر رنگ بیش از حد در یه پشت به کار میره. But it's actually the high number of knots per square inch which makes all the difference. The traditional scale for measuring that is raj or the number of vertical line of knots in every 7 centimeters. If you ever come here, look for the 50 Raj ones, with a combination of nearly 150 different colors. A vast array of colors is what carpet designers and weavers depend on. The wool used is of the highest quality and the yarn is dyed with natural plant dyes. The wool needs to simmer long enough in the dye pots in order to make sure the color won't change over the years. Okay, now the wool is ready. 
and a rainbow of colors is waiting for the skillful hands of the carpet weavers. Batches of yarn representing all the colors on the cartoon are hanging within easy reach. Master craftsmen tie each knot as they refer to the cartoons to pick the right color. At times, they create even a more exclusive impression by adding silk. Strands are so closely wrapped that they have to use a hook. کل صادرات فرش دستباف در ایران حدود 500 میلیون دلار هستش که بخش اعظمش مربوط به صادرات فرش دستباف تبریز هستش که در واقع در بازار جهانی و در بازار خود ایران یکی از پرفروش ترین فرش ها همون فرش دستباف تبریز محسوب میشه And this is most probably what's brought the Italian ambassador to Iran to one of the many workshops near Tabriz as he arranges for an exhibition Uh, it will be an exhibition which uh, um, uh, will be a wonderful uh, occasion for the Italian people and amateurs and also uh, uh, the followers on the, of the carpet industry you know, to touch with their hands you know, the beauty and uh, the artistic profile you know, of this uh, uh, industry of yours. Uh, I believe that uh, uh, this uh, um, exhibition will be very successful. Leonardo himself, the ambassador tried to tie one knot on his own. Okay, I did it. Finally, eventually. Durable and strong, Tabriz carpets are meant to adorn homes for at least a hundred years. The 500-year-old Ardebu carpet, now in the Victoria and Albert Museum in London, is a great example of that. ترها به نام طراحان فرش معروف هستم. Himself a skillful designer, Akbar Sari Khan explained that it's not just the classical medallion or tree designs, but the brilliant rich tones and soft pastels that sets them apart from other Persian rugs. Still, as carpet weavers stud the looms with colorful knots, the strands can turn into a canvas to display the creativity of the avant-garde designers. Rasson Arabzadeh shows us what the ultimate is and proves that even when it comes to modernizing the art of carpet weaving, it's still only the Iranians that can bring about a revolution. I wasn't surprised to find out that he too was from Tabriz, Kisumi Shahmadi for Iran. Well, that's all we have time for today, but don't forget to check out our website, ifilm.com, and email us at iran at ifilmtv.com. Thanks for watching.